Give us one second. I'm going to say, Ryan, do you want to say hello to everybody? Yeah, I sure do. Hey, everybody. Big time Zoom coming at you today or a, uh, sorry, StreamYard. But um, what a great topic. And as usual, we really try to focus on keeping things around 15 minutes. You know, we respect your guys' valuable time. We are very grateful that you join us every Monday, noon Eastern. And I hope you guys get a lot out of these. But today's topic is it's so super complex, but we are going to make it so simple. We're going to get into some hormone therapy discussion and we're going to talk a lot about ways to supplement and lifestyle things that you can implement to, to be more aware about your hormone and, and possible imbalances. So excited for today's Zoom and uh, excited actually because we're going to be talking about a product that uh, we recently released. It's a women's hormonal support product. And I know for the guys that are watching, I want to make sure you all know that we do plan to launch a men's hormonal support product as well. It is in the works because um, there are significant differences, of course, between men and women. But um, as you'll hear today, there's a lot of stuff I think that most people don't realize when it comes to hormones and how important just generally nutrition and supplementation is because of the cofactors involved in the production and the maintenance and the metabolism of our hormones. So that's really what we want to touch on a little bit today. Uh, I think, unfortunately, for our Instagram folks out there, you will not be joining wah, us. Wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> All right. It's okay. Yeah. We'll, so we'll, we'll get... figure this out. It's just, it's not friendly with Instagram. So we're working on it. But we are. again, like Brian said, thank you for joining us today. We are live on Facebook and um, YouTube. And these are always available on our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe us there. So as we were talking about hormones, females out there, I mean, do you suffer with negative symptoms associated with hormone fluctuations? And for you guys out there, do you know someone, maybe your wife, your mother, your sister, your neighbor that deals with hormone fluctuations? I'm sure you know when they're going through something. Right. So this topic is for everybody. I'm Lisa and this is Dr. Ryan and we're here to cover um, everything for you. Um, okay, so today we're talking about how we can pre prevent those negative symptoms associated mm -hmm. with Let's first talk about like the the PMS symptoms, right? So th this this um discussion covers like all females. So through the whole menstrual cycle, so how we can prevent those negative symptoms as well as those perimenopausal going into menopause and postmenopausal women, how we can help alleviate some of those symptoms that you get that you know associated with the hormonal fluctuations. So we're going to cover female hormone fluctuations, lifestyle factors, big one that affects our hormones symptoms associated with hormone fluctuations and imbalances, therapeutic options for hormone health, and our Live Good Hormone Balance Supplement. Um, okay, so before we get into this, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. That way you get access to all of these videos. And like I said before, we also will always have it. It's always on our YouTube channel. So if you miss something or want to share with someone, you can always access it there. All right. So let's jump into sure. female hormone fluctuations. Um, so hormones are your body's chemical messengers, right? They're mm -hmm. constantly sending messages like from your brain to other parts of your body. Mm -hmm. If these are not working properly or something's going on there, then things are off with our body. Um, like whether if, when your hormones are out of whack, I mean, this affects everything from like our outlook on life, <laughs> our energy, our metabolism, our libido, how our menstrual cycle is it? Is it late? Is it early? Is it long? Is it heavy? Is it light? Lots of things go into play when we have these, you know, hormone uh, fluctuations. Um, and we all know those fun PMS symptoms that we get, right? So, I mean, the irritability, the mood swings, the just want to yell at everybody and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think he laughs because he knows from experience. Um, but, you know, we need to do what we can to help prevent these hormone fluctuations. Some of them obviously are not preventable, but there's many things that we can do to um, help this in the process. So I think we just got live on Instagram. Well, we'll see you here in a second. You can keep going. Okay, yeah. Bye. I mean, that'd be great if we jumped on late. It's okay. Um, okay, so those are those heat female fluctuations. Again, let's go back to like the, the PMS. So we go through the stages, right? From, um, you know, ovulation to getting our menstrual cycle and everything that takes place. And typically it's like those second two weeks of the cycle, if you're on a regular cycle, where a lot of factors go into play. And this is when we really start to get the negative symptoms. Um, you know, everything from like the breast tenderness to the mood swings, to the uh, irritability, to the bloating, we get it all. Um, and then also the hormone fluctuations through the perimenopausal to post to menopausal and postmenopausal. Um, and these vary a lot. I mean, Ryan can elaborate on this, but these vary a lot with like our estrogen um, imbalances that go into play where typically 
the good estrogen is going down, the bad estrogen is going up, giving us those negative symptoms. And we'll go into that a little further as we go on in our talk today. Um, but also make sure as I'm talking that you're writing in questions in the comments section because we will cover those you know, at the end of this and make sure we address as much as we can so we can really help you guys um, understand what's going on and how we can help it. Okay, so lifestyle factors. There are many lifestyle factors that affect our hormones. And like I was talking about control, we need to be able to control these to help ourselves because there's so much that we can't control. So perimenopause to menopause, we've got ongoing stress, things that affect it. Sorry, things that affect our hormones, perimenopause and menopause. Can't control that. It is what it is. But we have ongoing stress. Our stress really plays a role in our hormone, our diet huge player in our hormones. I mean, this goes from everything from like um, environmental toxins, right? Are we eating out of plastic containers? Are we getting those BPAs? Those yeah, BPA, your endocrine disruptors. Endocrine disruptors, xenoestrogens, right. um, PCBs, uh, even phthalates, which mm -hmm. are really common in plastics and other food-based products. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So you might not think that environmental toxins mm. have that big of a role in your hormones, but yeah. they do. They have Huge. a major, major, major role. So think about that. When, think about that next time you go and put your your hot soup in your little plastic Tupperware Yeah, container. and you microwave it or you leave a water bottle out in the sun and you sure. grab it and something like that. Those are your xenoestrogens. You know, They come in, they mimic estrogen, and they just wreak havoc. I mean, they're synthetic, obviously. You know, the BPA and, and I think probably BPA and, and um, PCBs are most commonly recognized, right? So, but that's exactly right. Cause you were talking about hormonal balance. Primarily we're talking about estrogen. Of course, progesterone plays a role, but these would be considered as sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone. So sure. when you have these xenoestrogens enter into the game, yeah, they're totally going to be playing games with your body, wreaking havoc. Now we will talk a little bit about plant-based phytoestrogens. They, those are also xenoestrogens, but we're going to talk about that later today, a little bit specifically related to soy and other, okay. other phytoestrogens. Okay. Um, and how they can play a beneficial role in our bodies. Yes. So sorry to interrupt you, but no, I like it. No, no, you're feeding into it. That's great. Um, so other things, diet. We said sleep. Okay, if we are getting too little sleep, guys, we are definitely negative, negatively affecting our hormones. Huge player in it. Um, our weight fluctuations. Think of like your maybe you yo-yo dieters out there. I mean, every time you go on this diet for three months and you lose all this weight and then you're off of it and you gain it all back, that affects our hormones. Um, uh, exercise. So this is not just lack of exercise. This is also too much exercise. And I'm going to speak on that from experience because this was me uh, when we were trying to get pregnant with children. Um, I was an over-exerciser, especially the cardio. So I would call myself a cardio junkie back then. And I really, really affected my hormones uh, negatively. And it had a major impact. It took us three years to get pregnant. Um, I was borderline about to, you know, get IVF. And luckily through my doctor's help and me backing off on exercise, we were able to regulate my hormones and I got pregnant naturally. So thank, thankful, thankful for that. But you have to understand this. So it's not just, it's not just too little exercise. It's also too much. And the cardio does play a big player in that we need to lift those weights. Um, smoking, major player, excess alcohol, and even excess caffeine, you know, some caffeine is good, but too much can have a negative effect on us. So again, these are all lifestyle factors that can affect our hormones. So we need to be able to control what we can control. I always say that across the board for so many things because there's so many things out of our control. So when we can, can control our diet, we can control our sleep, stress is tough. you got to work on it. It's not just going to happen saying like, I want to work on my stress. You have to actually work on your stress level whether it's going outside and taking a walk. I mean, again, you find what works for you. So to me, I know if I'm like, feeling it, you know how it feels, the stress is building, everything, the emotions rising, go outside, take a breath, go on a short walk. I promise you, you will feel so much better. So easy. So what I hear too ultimately is, you know, when you can focus on body composition, obviously having some healthy subcutaneous fat is important because we don't want to be so, so super lean. Right. Like you, you know, we're talking about with a lot of these over exercisers, mm -hmm. um, the cardio junkies, they tend to really cut out almost all body fat. And that's a problem, right? Especially yeah. for women and, uh, fertility looking for fertility reasons and it's not just cutting out just the body fat you don't really build the muscle well that, right? there you go that was my second okay point. go yeah well no and then of <laughs> course muscle mass is such a metabolically active tissue it does a far better job than obviously visceral body fat which is that unwanted fat that crowds around organs and around your belly and all that thing but the, the lean muscle mass does such a better job of of improving our hormone balance i just call it balance but our improve our hormone levels you know, and my hormone level might be different from another man's hormone level. Obviously, they will be. I mean, hormones are all, uh, 
you are not a perfect science, guys, not whatsoever. So complicated, very complicated, very nuanced, very individual. N of one applies for sure in a hormone world. But like Lisa said, they're so vital. They're so imperative for, for health. And, and they're, yeah, you can't live without them, obviously. Yes, for sure. And there's, no, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt no. you. I keep kind of, because I was going to say, like, a lot of today's discussions, you know, there's a, you know, from a hormone perspective, I always tell people, I said, it is important to have your hormones checked. We should know what your hormone levels are. And it'd be great if we had those at a baseline of, you know, when we, somewhere around 18, then again at 25, at 30, 35, for whatever the interval might be. But it would be nice to have the historical data so we kind of know where we're trending. Um, so if you don't know your hormone levels, go go get them checked. They are very, very cheap on a lab, from a lab perspective. There are a bunch of hormones in the body and there's a lot of interrelated activity going on with them. The hormone cycle, even like the experts, the foremost experts and the researchers in the hormone world still do not know definitively how every step of the process works. I mean, there's a, just a giant cascade of events, the way that they work on negative feedback loops and how the one hormone will signal another hormone to release the hormone. It's just like, so it's the, it's, it's the wildest thing. I think there's over like 50 hormones in the body, but I know predominantly what we're talking about again is the sex hormone. So that's the estrogens. There's basically three. There's estrone, estradiol, and estriol, E1, E2, and E3, respectively. There's progesterone and there's testosterone. So as we talk about, we talk about premenstrual syndrome, which is really for menstruating women. And then, of course, we're going to go into perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause. And there will be just a very, very short discussion on how those changes take place during those periods. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Um, okay, so we talked about the lifestyle factors, mm -hmm. control what we can control. And let's go into some of the symptoms associated with. And, you know, this is obviously more for me because I get to experience it with you, females out there. So we all... It, we all experience some sort of negative symptom. I mean, I don't know a single female, and I'm sure you don't out there. Raise your hand if you've all experienced it, because I know you have, but we all have something, whether it's the bloating, whether it's breast tenderness, night sweats, hot flashes, cramps, mood swings, irritability, the crying at a commercial for no apparent reason. I mean, there's so many things that that happen. And, and sometimes I always tell Ryan, like, when... Like, I feel like I can't control when it happens. I know it is happening, but I can't control it. And I always say it's only a couple of days a month, but he recognizes it. And it's always this like tension. I'm like, I can't just, you got to let me be for a couple of days and then it passes, but it's tough. It's really hard to handle, especially when we're in these busy worlds with dealing with multiple children, dealing with stressful jobs. I mean, it is tough to manage the emotions and the symptoms. Um, so Understanding our hormone fluctuations, understanding the lifestyle factors, understanding what we can do is really important to help alleviate these symptoms. Um, it, you know, it's it's really you're not treating anything. You're not, but you're you're just helping your body. You're supporting your body. Um, there are therapeutic options out there that we're going to discuss that go into this. So, I talked a lot about the lifestyle factors, right? And that might be overwhelming right now. Like, look, I'm telling you, you've got to sleep more, you've got to stress less, you've got to eat right, you've got to find the right balance of exercise. It's kind of all overwhelming. So if like you wanted to think about a really good place to start, it's with the diet. Uh, and that's with diet comes supplementation because nutrients really play a role. So when we have nutrient deficiencies, this can go from anything from like not taking a multivitamin, not taking our magnesium, vitamin D, you know, um, our, our fish oil, like we have our factor four, not routinely taking supplements can help can cause nutritional deficiencies, which can also play into roles in these hormone fluctuations, leaving with negative symptoms. So we need to make sure we're doing our proper diet and our proper supplementation, and then using supplements to help alleviate the symptoms. And I don't mean like going and getting the elite, right? Because that can start to like wreak havoc on your, your kidneys and your stomach and everything. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. you know, you yeah. know, when all else fails, I get it. You might have to reach for the bottle every once and again, but you don't want that to be like a routine thing. Oh, Definitely my not. time of the month. Here we go. I'm taking a leave for seven days. You really don't want to do that. Really negative, negatively can affect you. Sure. Um, so with so much information out there, and this is where I know your brain yeah. can really, really help so much information out there. It's hard to know what to do. What are our options? I mean, we have everything from hormone replacement therapy, yeah. from bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. Maybe you can help explain a little bit of the differences. And then to our, you know, supplementation, like with our live good hormonal balance that can help us through the process. So let's like, what's the major difference, Ryan, between 
hormone replacement therapy and bioidentical hormone replacement well, therapy. Actually, on that topic, so women have been severely underserved in sort of options for dealing with the fluctuations of, of hormones because that's really the main difference between men and women. Men have a general stable profile of hormones. Women do not. And so the we cycle, were dealt a shorter stick. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, and ultimately in 2002, they did a study called the Women's Health Initiative, which completely put any therapeutic option that was available off the table. They took it off the table. So hormone therapy sort of went, got a black eye, got a bruise, and hasn't recovered, really hasn't recovered. There's a, a movement now to, to reestablish hormone therapy as a treatment because that study was so flawed. It has now been, it's widely accepted that the outcomes they were measuring, the study, the whole study, it just, it, it was flawed. It was flawed. So the risks that they highlighted really don't apply to the level that they 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 made it feel like or seem like, and the benefits they got just completely downplayed. Right. So hormone replacement therapy is a very viable option for many 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 women, of course men as well, and it should be done safely with a knowledgeable provider. It is not the standard of care in today's society. It is not. When you go in and you see an endocrinologist or you see an obstetri obstetrician, a gynecologist, you probably will not even be talked to about therapeutic options. There's just not much available. And even if you happen to get down a hormone path with them, they may not be that well educated because the system, the didactic, the didactic school system is not really teaching it. They're not training on it. It's really disappointing because now the science has shown, there's been multiple studies now to show the benefits of hormone therapy and the fact that the risk of breast cancer and different cancers is much lower, if at all, what they originally stated they were. It could potentially be in the opposite direction where there's beneficial protective benefits of hormone therapy. So again, I encourage you to seek out a provider somewhere in the functional medicine space, someone that understands hormone therapy, a specialist that has been trained in it, that has seen a lot of patients and does the testing, the appropriate testing and does the, the whole thing. Because even though you get your blood work done, it is so subjective. A big portion of hormone therapy is so subjective. It's how you feel. If you may have low testosterone, but not have any symptoms of low T, so you don't need it. And the same thing with women and estrogen. So, and there are options. You know, BHRT is just a bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, which means that the, the molecule is exactly matched to the to the body's to the way a body manufactures or or produces a hormone. So, there, right. these options are out there. They're available. Um, but, and then of course you can look at sort of homeopathic or alternative ways, and you can certainly look at supplementation, which is like Lisa said, nutrition. And that's what we wanted to talk a little bit about today. And Lisa, I know we're running a little late. We're about 15 no, after, but I think we're fine. We yeah, can totally kind of just this keep is going. a big topic. It's There's a lot, big topic. It's a lot to cover. It is um, a big topic. And you know, what Ryan was talking about, like know, know your numbers and, you know, seek advice from a, you know, especially a functional medical doctor. They're, they are so well versed in this topic, but I make sure I do, I get my mind check my hormones checked yearly because I am tracking myself to make sure as I start to go into perimenopause and menopause, I want to make sure I I tackle that appropriately. I want to make sure if I need to be on bioidentical hormone replacement therapy to help with those symptoms and to or just to, to help you know the path then then I will. But I also know all along the path being able to take nutritional supplements to help me, you know, balance those symptoms, um, again control what I can control, then you know I'm gonna do that. Of course. Um, okay, so let's talk about let's uh, specifically. So this is our Live Good Hormone Balancing Supplement. I'm so happy to have this uh, brought to us. I mean, this helps support and balance our hormones throughout the process. This goes for all women. Like I said at the beginning, this is for menstrual um, you know, um, symptoms. This is for perimenopause, menopause, postmenopausal. But the biggest thing that this is for, it's to help alleviate negative symptoms associated with hormone fluctuations. Okay. This is not like a hormone, um, a, a hormone therapy. I mean, a hormone replacement therapy substitute. Okay. That's, that's not what this is to help alleviate the symptoms, but Ryan will get into the details of it because when it comes to, you know, the estrogen balance, a lot that goes on as we are leading into uh, perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause, um, there's an ingredient here, DIM, that's very important in mm -hmm. helping balance that that estrogen because the negative estrogen starts to go up and we get the negative symptoms associated with, but it's also, isn't it the negative one, the one that's more associated with um, breast cancer and whatnot? So there's a transition really from premenopause, perimenopause into post into menopause and postmenopause just simplifying it, your estrogen levels drop, your progesterone levels drop, your testosterone may, mostly kind of stays the same, but that's the that's the thing. And your your most uh, prevalent circulating hormone pre-menopause is, is estradiol, the E2. 
And then through menopause and after, you get a significant drop in that. And then essentially what well, estrone, E1 becomes the most uh, dominant estrogen. And that's the one that is most associated with these negative side effects. But of course, at the same time, we have a drop of estradiol and a drop of progesterone. Sure. So there's a significant imbalance there, which would be mostly the contributing factor. So, and then a big part of that is, so all right, if I want to talk some of these ingredients, you know, a big part of that is the production and the metabolism of it. So how does the body break it down? And that's a lot what even milk thistle does in the liver because estrogen is metabolized through the liver. Sure. And so you'll have, you'll have beneficial things like, um, what did I just say, which was the ingredient for the liver? Milk thistle? Milk thistle, mm -hmm. yeah, of course. And then the dim. So it can help actually metabolize some of the estrone and help create more balance in, in the hormones. And then there's other ingredients in here that I wanted to talk about. Um, the isoflavins that you find in the soy, soy right. extract. And I know soy has gotten a bad, kind of a bad rap, which is unfortunate. It's kind of like the same thing goes back to these flawed studies where now they're showing that soy has protective benefits. Whereas a uh, Shanghai Women's Initiative, which we know that women in, in Far Eastern countries, like the, they eat a lot of soy. Yeah. They eat soy. It's a, it's a staple in their diet. Right, daily. Daily. They have much lower incidence of breast cancer, ovarian cancer. Yes. They have much lower incidence of all these other chronic diseases and their soy intake is off the charts high. And it's mostly because of the active constituent, which is isoflavins. So, you know, we're, we're looking at it going, okay, this women's Shanghai, this Shanghai Women's Health Initiative looked at it and showed all these benefits of soy, right? And then when you look back at our historical studies on soy, they're super flawed. Mm -hmm. So now the science again is sort of flipping. And what's going on there is they, the soy or isoflavins in the soy is interesting. It's a phytoestrogen, but it can have estrogenic effects, so beneficial more estrogen effect, or it can have anti-estrogenic effect. What we're typically seeing, this is why we say the word balance, and this is where it gets confusing for women. How can it help me if my levels are high? How can it help me if my levels are low? Well, for premenopausal women, their, S, their E2 is high, their estradiol is high. Okay. Well, it can come in, this isoflavins come in, can kind of act as an anti-estrogen there. Can it bring the levels slightly down or stabilize? Right. And then on the flip side, the postmenopausal, menopausal, postmenopausal women, they're low in estradiol, where you have an estrogenic effect of with the isoflavin. So it's actually benefiting and providing more of an estrogenic effect. So this is the idea, this is the way that the isoflavins are proposed to work. And it's not clear. Of course it's not clear. And that's again why we say, are you symptomatic? Are you looking for a solution? If you are, try it. It's a trial. It's does it work for you? If not, stop taking it. You know, that's just the name of the game. At least you could tell you she's gone through multiple supplements. Sure. She's trying to find the right balance of things. But here's what I will tell you. The list of ingredients in this women's hormonal support product, you will not find in another product. You would have to take three, between three and five products to get that balance of, of and by the way, they're in standardized extracts. So you know exactly of how much of the active constituent you're actively, you're actually getting. So that's kind of the game there. That's yep. sort of what's happening. Oh, I don't know. Let's see if I made any other notes. What are you looking? So, I mean, you can check out this product on our website, livegood.com. It is $19.95 retail, $14.95 for members. Right. I mean, that's a 30-day supply. Um, and, I mean, this could be something that you're needing to take every day. Uh, say you're, you know, um, into, during our, your menstrual cycle, you know, maybe take. You, again, you have to play around with it. So with uh, the supplements for me, I need to take them every day throughout my cycle, throughout my month cycle. Because if I only take them those last two weeks when things start to get nitty gritty, I actually miss my ovulation symptoms because that's the middle, right? And mm -hmm. I get really symptomatic there. Okay. I get painful um, cramps, bloating, and breast tenderness all starts around that middle. So if I wasn't taking it every day, I'm going to miss that point, right? If I just started taking it in the middle. So you have to figure out what works for you. No person is, you, you know, alike. Mm -hmm. No, So you just have to see like, is the black cohosh, cohosh in here? Is that going to help you with your, hot, you know, your hot flashes? Sure. And, you know, Good. Yeah. I'm not there yet. So, I, you know, but I, I know it's, it's a well-studied ingredient to, to help with hot flashes. And so is, and so, so the phytoestrogens are too. So isoflavins okay. and the dunkwe is also like to act as a phytoestrogen. Um, whereas the chasberry can be more of a premenstrual syndrome benefit, right? right. Some of those other symptoms. Right. Yeah. And, you know, um, I was getting some feedback from customers. I had an email that someone hadn't had their period in three months, but should have had, should be regular. Um, they were just irregular due to factors. They started taking this and they got their period. So now they're regular. So it's just things like that. It can help balance you. And we might say like, God, oh, I wish I didn't have my period every month. 
but we need to be, we, sh- we need to be regular. Like our bodies are meant to do what they're meant to do. And we really should have around about a 28 day cycle. So unless you're in that irregular perimenopause, sure, sure. which is the 12 months leading up to where you have irregular per- periods leading into no periods for 12 months. Yes. So, I mean, most importantly, there are options out there. And when it comes to balancing, alleviating, helping our symptoms, this hormonal balance balancing supplement that we've made, there is nothing like it. Again, check it out on our website, read all about it. Always ask me questions. Um, and let's actually, while I'm talking about questions, let's go into questions. Okay. Um, how do we bring this up? Show? Yeah. There we go. So I get I actually get this question um, in my email a lot from Sue. Does it help with someone who has had a full hysterectomy? So again, this depends because if you've had a full hysterectomy 10 years ago and you're not having symptoms anymore, I mean, your your body has kind of balanced out, right? You You are where you are. You, you can't start taking something and, and re- reverse anything like that. But um, I have a friend that had just recently had a forced hysterectomy. Um, so she was in, well, not forced, sorry, a hysterectomy that led her into forced menopause. Um, and so she's dealing with a load of negative symptoms associated. And it might take, you know, her functional medical doctor saying it might take her months for her body to start to balance out. So yes, this is helping her through the process, helping her with those hot flashes, um, helping her with her mood swings and bloating. So again, you've got to try with what works best for you. Um, to that point, I'm glad you said that. that I actually would say you need to try it and take it for 60 to 90 days to even allow that balance. So that whole idea of just kind of treating symptomatically is probably not going to work, but it might. I just would suggest starting it, getting steady state concentration, stabilizing, and then seeing from there. So Okay, Melanie, you basically kind of asked her the same thing. Five years post complete hysterectomy. How can I help you? If you've got those negative symptoms, this can help you. Um, with some other questions. Remember, keep writing these in and make sure you have subscribed or joined us late. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can get all these questions answered. Can't miss a topic. Cover so much over the weeks. Um, there's just a lot of positive testimonial stuff coming the in. The ingredients of each product and the descriptions are very helpful. When you check out our website, you will yeah. see a learn more section. Um, in that section, you can read the ingredients. Um, and if you have further questions, always reach out to me via email so I can help you. Oops, so, show? Yeah. And this is an interesting one because, again, in order to, to be able to get everything and have Dung Kui, by the way, in a standardized extract, which is very unusual. It's not an easy ingredient to source. You have to take three to five supplements and you'd be paying. I, I, look, I look at some of these women's hormonal support products that are on the market may have one or two random herbal ingredients and they're like 30, 40, 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. The, the prices are outrageous. And I think it's because it's such an underserved population. I mean, a women right now with this, with the health span that we have, about a third of their life will be spent in postmenopause. I mean, it's a significant time period and there's a lot of things. And I, I know we're just, we're talking about a lot of postmenopausal, but this really does apply all throughout. So it wouldn't apply to the one question I saw, which was a 15 or 13 year old girl, because if there's some significant imbalances there, there definitely needs to be checked out with their, their, their physician, right? I just can't recommend this, this type of product for that, that age. I wouldn't recommend it, of course, for breast, breastfeeding, pregnancy. And if you have active cancer, um, I would definitely consult with the oncologist as you should anyway, with any supplementation, any new foods that you enter in, it really should be a really holistic approach with your oncologist. If you're undergoing active treatment. Okay. We have this from Linda. How does the same product treat both stages of hormonal imbalances, menstrual cycle, as well as menopause? So Ryan just went into the whole estrogen breakdown and how it works to estrogen balance in both phases, both uh, differences in in our cycles or in our um, hormones are affected by estrogen. Yeah. So this helps to right. balance them, but also we deal with a lot of the, the you know similar symptoms from the irritability, mood swings, bloating. I mean, it's all it's all there. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, hot flashes to a different extent with with menstrual cycle. I mean, I get very hot <laughs> towards my my real end of the the cycle. So it definitely helps all stages. Um, well, it definitely it can. Right. I mean, that's kind of what we're saying here is like, again, you, you need to, you need to experiment a little bit and really kind of be take control of your own health and just sort of know what you're doing. And so hopefully this helps you guys, because I don't know of any supplement brand that's out there doing what we're doing, just talking about the benefits, the risks, and you know, what to expect if you're going to start supplementing. Right. And like Ryan but said, truthfully, 
prior to this supplement, our supplement, I have tried many. Many. And I, you know, and again, I, I would stick with it for three months and and see if it makes a difference. And if it doesn't make a difference, I move on. So we each have different things going on in our body and why we're experiencing different things. So um, again, you've got to try. Yeah, the it's just a shame. Women have really been left to just figure it out on their own. There's not many solutions. There still is not. And so I'm pleased that we're able to we're able to sit here on this platform and talk about this product because it, I think it can help a lot. It really help a lot. And just for you guys out there, you know, when your estradiol, the E2, does drop, I mean that's typically what you would see the uh, hormone replacement therapy go after. Typically, it's estradiol, so E2, and a little bit of E3. Um, and some, usually some progesterone, because when your progesterone drops out, man, oh, your sleep is completely wrecked. Um, and it doesn't affect everybody the same, but I've certainly seen seen women really, really struggle because of this low E2 and low progesterone. Right. Um, a lot of just random questions about, you know, having breast cancer due to increased estrogen and progesterone. Yes. You know, I, well, I always advise just speaking with your, your, your doctor, your oncologist, um, with the, are you saying active cancer? The problem with it, the risk though, if you go to speak with your your tip, your, your I, just Western trained standard of care, primary care docs, you're going to get a stare that looks like you're a, a monster. Like, what would you even think about doing this for? Why would you go on hormone therapy? That's a risk. You're, meanwhile, you have these this complete like uh, upwelling surge of new practitioners that are very very aggressive in using hormone therapy and they're getting tremendous results right it's not for everybody and there is some risk there's some benefit of course you got to weigh the two right but, but i hate the idea that we're just completely blocking this hormone therapy as a standard of care right my prediction and my hope is that it becomes back it circles full back in it's a standard of care in in all medical practices in the next two decades right and whether this is something you've had cancer in the past mary yes you know sa yes. same same thing applies you know the the estrogen that's too high is with your your bad estrogen bad because it's too, it you know so but again we don't know your specific case but that's also why we really love functional medical doctors because they take they look at it as a, a totally different approach um a whole root cause a whole full body um not just that standard you know textbook you know, treatment and answers. I think I kind of went through it. Okay, awesome. And I would say this too, I'd say that of course you don't want to use things that would promote cancer developing cells, right? So that's another that's another thing. You gotta be careful. Like I think we've said that enough, right? Like and but I know the reason why we keep repeating is because how many people we get questions from and they're just pretty surprised with our answer. They're like yes. they're not used to it. And again, there's plenty of literature to support our position. So um, hopefully you guys have good, trustworthy medical advice in your world. Um, we're happy to help with questions if you want to email us and, but continue to tune in, please subscribe because you guys can stay up to speed with everything we're doing and then check us out every Monday noon Eastern for more of these awesome. Yes. So make sure you subscribe. Um, uh, so yeah, bottom line, right. Bottom line with this whole thing. So many, so much information out there, but all of us women, we go through these hormonal fluctuations. We need to know our numbers. You need to work with a qualified healthcare professional to know your numbers so you can understand what is going on, why your body's feeling the way it is, and how you can probably properly treat it. And as always, our hormonal balance supplement is a rock star supplement out there. You've got to try it. It is wonderful. Um, next week we have our, it's our FAQ, but I'm going to, I'm changing the name to AMA, ask me anything. So it's really ask us anything, but that's where you, we will come on live. So come with your questions and you can ask us anything health and uh, product related, supplement related. We are going to be here to answer you. So looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you guys for joining us today. Thanks everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.